Hi all, this is Nancy L.T. Hamilton, and today we are going to be gold testing. I've got a bunch of refining to get out of my house and turn it into money slash tools. Woohoo! So I've got on my safety glasses, I have on my chemical resistant gloves, and I've got bunches and bunches of gold that I need to test. My luck, it'll probably be all gold filled and I'll cry. And this is like scrap bucket here. All kinds of filings and other things. That's going to be a pain in the butt to test. So I'm probably just going to send that off in a mystery bag. If they accept those, I will find out. I am using a gold testing kit that comes with really strong terrifyingly strong acids from 10k to 22k you can get them for platinum and silver also and it comes with this stone and it also comes with these little testers that have the actual gold attached to the end of them it says on these what uh, flavor they are what carrot they are You'll want a magnet just so you can run it over your stuff to see if you pick anything up. Um, if there's anything in here with iron in it, it will be pulled out immediately. Um, I have nothing, so you'll know if you have a strong magnet, it'll pick the, hold the bag for you. And you'll need a, a needle file or an escape file. This is a three square or a triangular file. Uh, I like the sharp edge to cut into pieces that I'm not sure of. And you'll need your gold, of course. I use uh, wet dry sandpaper and to clean the gold filings from the previous testing off of this stone. And a loop can be helpful for looking at the jewelry for markings. Um, if you see a GF on it, gold filled, don't even bother testing it. Just throw it in your little gold filled container because nobody's going to mark it less than it actually is speaking of gold filled i have containers here in these in the form of these little cups 1814 i mean gold filled 14 18 22 carat i don't think i have any 24 floating around so um and sometimes i use a toothpick to spread the solution across a couple of lines so let's get started I have this nugget thing. I don't remember when I made it, but I do know that it didn't work very well when I tried to roll it out. It cracked, so there's probably some kind of impurities in there. So I'm going to refine it and see if they can take that garbage out and just give me some money for it. Um, I, well, I'm going to take it and I'm going to rub it really hard on the stone making a lovely stripe like that. And then I'm taking this ring and rubbing it on. It's so hard to do anything with gloves on. So now I'm gonna put them in order so I know which is which. Um, I usually start with the lowest testing solution first, which is a 10K. Sorry, this camera's at an angle so that I can actually sit down and do this. Oh, you're going to have to suffer. All right, here we go, 10K. I'm going to run that across the top. Here, and we're going to watch the reaction. So right away I can tell that both of these are over 10K because you can see the gold through the solution still. If it wasn't, if it was base metal or less than 10K, it would eat right through it. Let's go to a 14. What's happening over there? They both still, but you can see gold through both of them. So we know they're at least 14. I'm going to go to 18. Let's see what happened. 
Well, that on the right is completely gone. So we know this ring is 14. I'm, I'm going to show you a test on this to make sure it's not plated also. Uh, it looks like this is at least 18. I'm going to check it for 22. I made these from uh, gold nuggets, so it should be pretty high. I think I made it. We'll see. Nope. Okay, so this is 18 karat gold. Yay! <laughs> Makes me happy. That's worth some money. So that goes in there. It, you can tell right here it ate right through the gold. C'est la guerre. I was hoping for 22, but 18 is fabulous. And um, I forgot what was this was 10, 14. This is 14 gauge, so I'm going to throw that in there. But first, we're going to do this. I'm going to take my file and I'm going to cut into this a bit. And then I'm going to take my um, 14K solution and drop it in there. And what I'm looking for is that I want to see that turn green. And it didn't. So this is solid gold. I'm going to find something that I know is green. It will turn green so we can show you that. Oh, this did. My diamond ring here. All right, let's take a file of this and see what happens. I'm not even sure if this is gold plate. I'm just going to throw it in there. All right. So I don't know if you can see that or not. See how green that is? We have a, what's it called? Imposter. So he goes back into his gold filled container. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Um, the hardest part is sometimes seeing, you know, did this eat through? But if you look for this really dark area, that's a pretty good indicator that once it eats all the gold underneath it, that it's at the carrot above it. Um, let's see, what else can I show you? Let me think on that. I'll get back to you. So one last thing, just uh, I thought I should talk about using the tester strippy thing. I don't know what this is called. Let's call it a star. Um, I'm, I took the 18 gauge, ran it over here, and I took my nugget and ran it over here. And I just want to compare how the um, test tester compares with the one that I determined was 18. Make sure life is still good. Yep. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the gold through both of them. So, S-U-C-C-E-S-S. -S. That's the way we spell success. <laughs> All right. I'm out of here. See you later. Ciao.